As you look at the equipment that we have in front of us, uh, I want you to concentrate on the questions that I ask and the observations that you make. A billiard ball. I'm going to roll it. This is a billiard ball again. Uh, I'm going to roll it down this ramp, and uh, I want you to watch where it goes. But actually, before we do that, I want you to. Uh, I want to tell you that there are three possibilities. It'll either go straight through to where it is right now, or it'll turn off to the left, or it'll turn off to the right. It's a billiard ball. And predict, please, which way will it go? Straight down. Straight down. And there it is. OK. Here's a steel sphere. It's about uh, 10 times as heavy as that billiard ball. If I, if I had one the same volume, I would use it, but this is the largest one I have available. I'm going to roll it down as well. Same three possibilities. To the left, to the right, or same path as the billiard ball. Straight down. Well, what's the black cube? What black cube? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. Based on the observations you've made so far, where will it go? To the right. Based on the observations you've made so far? Based on the observation of the black cube. What black cube? <laughs> OK. But you didn't have any evidence for that. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> now, when I do the next one, I want you to just base what you've seen or what you're going to predict on evidence that you have. OK? Steel sphere about a third the mass of that, three times the mass of that. There are now five possibilities. When I roll it down, it might go to the right, uh, left, sorry, straight through, bend between the two, or bend beyond that one. Five possibilities. One, two, three, four, five. I want you to, based on the evidence you've collected so far, I think it's going to go below the steel ball. Point, please. Right. Maybe. OK. I'll say maybe right here. OK. That, that's the logical one. And that's what most students predict. Okay. And that's where it's going to go. Because zero steel, a little bit of steel, a lot of steel. Mm. OK? Uh, and? Nancy. Nancy, put your finger in there. Uh, and so you're showing where it's going to go. And it, it's kind of heavy, so pull your finger out just before it hits your finger. Uh, just before. I'll leave it there now. OK. Steel sphere. Where's it going to go? It's lighter than that one, lighter than that one, heavier than that one. Well, now I'm guessing over here. Another steel sphere. Again, lighter than this one. Where's it going to go? Below there. You're getting good. <laughs> Where's it going to go? I think it's right here. Yeah. Where is it going to go? <laughs> of course. Okay. okay. The uh, obviously that black cube is a magnet, mm -hmm. uh, and this was a good example of uh, neutron capture mm -hmm. or electron capture. Uh, the instrument is a model of the one that, we are, that we're going to look at on the uh, easel in just a moment. Uh, it's, a, it's, a mo it's a model mass spectrometer. The spheres are, uh, are being used to uh, simulate atoms, or ions, I should say. 
I guess this one's an atom, it's neutral. The others are ions. Now let's walk over to the easel. Uh, here we have a, uh, a electro uh, an electromagnetic field and a magnetic field. Ions being shot through the electromagnetic field, through the magnetic field, and ending up on a collector plate. So a simulation of a mass spectrometer. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll finish over here. You know, it's funny, we said the, a couple of times today, this is my all-time favorite experiment. Uh, I first did this one in the early, no, I guess 1961. And I've been doing it literally thousands of times. And it was my first all-time favorite. I really think it still is. Uh, but you keep modifying it. Um, I'm just going to move this over. Is that OK? Here is a smaller version of what I would call a student mass spectrometer. Before we do it, you notice I bounced the spheres. I really meant to bounce, bounce the spheres, as I said, to tell you that they're steel. That's not the true reason, though. The true reason is, if the spheres sit near the magnet for a while, this is where it was. They don't roll true anymore. Uh, the, uh, there's a magnetic field induced into the sphere and a combination of the magnetic field around the magnet and the magnetic field induced in the sphere changes direction. And sometimes they even change position as seriously as that. And that's why I bounced them. OK, here's a student grade mass spectrometer that a friend of mine developed just a couple of weeks ago. An ordinary, this is a plexiglass sheet, a picture frame. Uh, we picked them up at the dollar store picture frames and the plexiglass sheet, we uh, had to be cut to replace the glass that I broke on the way down. Uh, there's a piece of two-sided tape here, which I hope will catch the spheres. So here's a marble, which was caught on the two-sided tape. <laughs> a large sphere. A smaller sphere, and that's where it went. A smaller sphere again. And you can see the small magnet here. It's a small disk magnet that you can pick up in uh, well, we bought them at uh, Lee Valley, I think. Uh, small disk magnets. A model mass spectrometer that the students can use to calculate, to measure and calculate the ratio of radius of curvature and masses of the, of the uh, spheres. So you can actually use this experiment to determine the masses of the spheres, the masses of the atoms, if you like, or the ions. We'll go to the uh, chart again. And there's just a neat little uh, diagram of where of what you just saw, and uh, and you'll see this uh, when you see the final product. Uh, that write-up will be uh, a part of it. So the uh, and you can use uh, say the radius of curvature of the uh, spheres to measure the. Mass of, the, mass of the spheres. 
Students have said to me, both my high school students and my college students, so why can't we go into the physics department and see their mass spectrometer? Well, the simple answer is it's just a big box, a big black box. Uh, the uh, more complete answer is you don't see anything unless you know how it works and what it is. And uh, in, in first year chemistry, in first year high school chemistry, you teach kids about the mass spectrometer, maybe not directly, uh, but you talk about how uh, uh, isotopes have, were discovered and how isotopes are massed by comparison with known, uh, the masses of known products, known uh, elements. Uh, and you talk about particles being accelerated and bent and well, you can't see those things. And a simulation like this seems to do the trick. Mass spectrometer, I think, is probably the most interesting um, idea that students can see in a simulation in order to appreciate uh, the difference in atomic masses and atomic numbers and other concepts like that.